by faith. You don't look at what you see. Yes, you can be going. And you know the devil is very subtle. The devil is just come to you. You can have an accident now. And you begin to think about it. If I have an accident, what will happen? Who will take care of my children? I begin to be afraid. Instead of people saying, get out of my heart. I cannot have an accident. The Bible says he will keep in perfect peace. Whose heart is what? He stayed on him. He says, I will keep your going out and your coming in. Faith not to be like a medication. When the devil comes against you and gives you one headache and gives you one to back up, give it back three words of God. He tells you, you know you are going to fail. You tell it the Bible has said, I shall be the head, I shall not be the tail. I shall be a poor holy, I shall not be with thee. Say you to the righteous, it shall be well with thee, but they shall see the fruit of their labor. The Bible says, I shall not build houses and someone else will not be with thee. Come on. When the devil comes against you in one way, the Bible says they shall see devil way. And how can they see devil way? By the word of God. When you bring those doubts to you, oh, do you think you can live long? Do you think your health is going to be fine? Do you think your children will be going out fine? Come on. The Bible says, the children of the mighty shall be great in the land. I am the children the Lord has given unto me and for what? Signs and for wonder. You don't let it stay like that. The devil bring one word to you. Go to the word of God. Look for seven words to capture him. Because the Bible says they will come against you in one way. They will capture out many ways. Seven ways. So when you bring one word to you, don't let it lie. Don't let it stay. Immediately open your Bible. And this phone has made it so easy. Go on Google. Everyone that speaks about living long in the Bible, it will give you more than one place. Write it down, paste it on the wall. When the devil is telling you you are going to die, go to the place. God has said, I shall not die for thee to fulfill the glory of the Lord, to proclaim the glory of the Lord. He has told me I will satisfy him with long life. You begin to bring that word to him. I tell you, by the time you finish number six, number seven, that word is gone. Amen. So when you come against you in one way, you must, you come against him in lovely letters. So as we're going through this week, let the devil make the mistake of coming and tell you, do you know you are going to die early? Open your Bible, write it down, paste it on the wall, and begin to decree the word of the Lord. This is what God has said. It cannot be. Because even when he came against Jesus, what did Jesus say? It is written. So when the devil is coming, and the devil is so stubborn, even when you come against him, when you say the word of God, it's still going to come back. That's why I said, write it down. Paste it on your wall. So when you say any rubbish, if you don't think you're going out, take a picture. Have it on your wall. When you bring the back up to you again, go there. Go there. Keep the glory down. Keep the glory down. Amen. He says, by his stripes, we are healed. Keep the glory the word of God. Amen. The Bible says, the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword, piercing into the bone and marrow. So that doubt and fear the devil is standing with you with, that fear of death, that fear of tomorrow, the fear of your children not getting fed. Come on, come against him with the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord, Bible says, if you don't come back to me until it has fulfilled that which I have sent it to do. And that is the power we have. But many of us are not using it. I pray to the Lord we open our eyes to be able to use the word of the Lord, to be able to speak it in Jesus' name. Amen. If the word of God can turn the world like upside down, can turn it and make it as beautiful as we see today, how much more the word of God in our mouths? How much more the word of God in our mouths? I want us to activate that faith talk. When you talk, talk by faith. Even when things are not working, the God does not expect us to speak according to the circumstances we see. Even when things are not working, maybe your child is not doing how you want the child to be. Your child is not what? Your child is not listening. Begin to decree. I have decreed. You shall be great. You shall be a child that will bring glory to God. You shall not be a child of failure. Say positive things to your children. Don't be saying you. The way that you are going, you are going to end up like your father. You are going to end up like your father's family. You are going to end up like your uncle. When you say those words, you are sowing seeds. How the devil wants you to be into the life of a child. Don't tell your husband, look at you, you are useless. That you even amount to anything. And then later you are wondering, why is my, my husband not doing well? You said it. You proclaimed it into the life of that man. You proclaimed it into the life of that woman. You have a car, and the car has a problem that says, I don't think this car is going to work again. <laughs> and then the car passed up, and you're asking God, God, why? No, God needs to ask you, why did you do that? You need to be careful of what you say. Because the devil wants us to speak 
word against our self. The Bible says in our tongue is what? Life and death. And those that do this will benefit from it. How are you using your tongue? Are you speaking words of life or you are speaking death into your destiny? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Speak it out. Don't just say this is what I did. Speak it. And what the Bible has said concerning you or its circumstance. Speak it out. I know it's able to see you through whatever it is that passing through. You have this confidence in God that no matter what is going through, it says it makes all things work together for good. The good dividing all things work together for good for them that know him, for them that trust in him, that call according to his purpose and his will. Don't let the devil make you sit in a corner and tell you you can't become this, you can't do this. When you say what, say it again, things. You see, in the word of God, you say, objection, my Lord. When the devil is telling you are going to die early, say, objection, my Lord. God, I cannot die early. And then you open the Bible. Because your word has said, because your word has said, because your word has said, in section this and section this, in chapter this and chapter this, and you need to give the word. And the devil can only scream against you in one way. It's one thing. Ah, it's enough now. It's not just one thing I said. Now you want that for you. Yes. Bring out your evidence. Bible says, let us reason together, says the Lord. The devil is coming against your family. He's coming against your peace. He's coming against your hope. And you're saying, hmm, is it not like how it started with my parents? Is it not like how it started with my uncle? I am seeing the trend. And you are seeing the trend. And you are looking. And you, as a child of God, cannot stand and say, devil, no. The devil is not going to just allow you to rest. He's going to come against you. But you have to sharpen your mouth. You have to what? Sharpen your mouth. Even Jesus, the Son of God, did not be quiet when he came against him. He kept saying what? It is written. It is written. If you not ask to overcome the devil by the words of God, how about you now? And that is why you have to fill your heart with the words of God. So that when the devil is coming against you, you have what to counter him. Amen. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. It's not grandiose things. Some people say, what's wrong with this one? You're just, you just saying what cannot be. No, say it. Walk it. Talk it. Because it will come to pass at the right time. And what you say is your confirmation of your belief. See, after me, what I say is the confirmation of my belief. What I say is the confirmation of my belief. So whatever you find yourself saying is what you believe. You need to ask yourself, what do I believe? Do I believe God is going to satisfy me with long life? Do I believe God is going to bless me abundantly? When you believe it, you say it. But when you don't believe it, you don't say it. Watch what you say. Because what you say is a determinant of your belief. It's a confirmation of your belief. We are called to proclaim with confidence, with authority, the good news of Jesus Christ. But many of us, we just say we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and then we stop. Even Jesus told his disciples, greater works we do. How can you do this greater work? By speaking. By speaking. Amen. How did Jesus accomplish all the signs and wonders that he did? It doesn't really matter that Lazarus was dead for four days. He just went there and he spoke. Lazarus, come up. He did not argue with them. Is it dead for four days? Is it smelly? How bad is it the constant? No. He just got it. Let her run. Come on. When the mother told him there is no wine, he didn't ask, okay, what kind of wine were they drinking? How did they finish the wine? They were not very, very careful with the wine. He just got it. Put water in the pot. When that leprous people came to him, oh, please heal us. He said, go and show yourself to the priest. He didn't ask them, how far gone is the leprous? Did it affect your body? Did it affect your legs? Has it affected it? It doesn't matter. Because no matter how far the disease has gone, there is transformation power in the word of God. No matter how far that situation is, keep speaking the word of God to it and you see it all around me in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Only if you believe all things are possible. Jesus told them, if you believe all things, not just some things, not just few things, all things are possible. And the truth is that nothing will happen if you do not proclaim it. Nothing will happen if you don't proclaim it. So when you keep your mouth shut, everything is still quiet. 
When you keep your mouth shut, things will not work right. When you keep your mouth shut, things will begin to continue to go from bad to worse. The only thing that stops what is going wrong is your word. Your word of faith, not the word of self doubt. Don't be pushed to speak with in fear. Don't be pushed to speak because of, of your doubt. Don't be pushed to speak because you are afraid of something. Be pushed to speak in faith. Speak in faith, even when things are not going right. Amen. We are called to say what God says about us. The Bible says, You are beautifully and wonderfully made. When we talk about wonder, something you see and you are in awe, something you see and you are surprised. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. God says you are exceptional. God says you are a chosen generation. Why are you looking down on yourself? Speak the word the Lord has spoken to you today. Whatever it is the Lord has spoken to you, let it be the word you are speaking to yourself. I pray the Lord we all want in Jesus' name. We are called to talk about our situation the way God talks about it. Whatever situation you find yourself, speak at, in that situation the way God has spoken about it. That is one thing I love about David. David saw Goliath, that small boy, seeing that very tall man, that giant. And then what did he remember? He remembered the testimonies of time past. How he overcame today. How he overcame the lion. Many of us are facing this situation today. And we are making the devil to make us feel it's the end of us. When we can say, I remember years ago, when I don't have food in my cupboard and God provided. I remember years ago, when I thought it was the end of my life, when I was very sick and God saved me. I remember years ago, when we nearly had an accident and God helped us. I remember years ago, when I had no children and God gave me I remember years ago when I had one job and God gave me a job. I remember years ago when I had no hope and God gave me hope. God expects us to speak those things that were before. That thing, they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb and by what? The word of their testimonies. Many of us have forgotten the things the Lord has done for us. We can't even remember the same testimonies to remind ourselves. David said the same God that helped me to kill the bear. Which problem has faced you like a bear before that you overcome? Which problem has faced you like a lion that you overcome before? Come on, call it God and say, I remember that time that God saved me from this problem. And I know the God has done that. And you will be like them. This problem, you are going to be like the one that I have overcome before. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is born in the world. Come on, speak the word of faith in your mouth. Amen. You believe with your heart and then you confess with your mouth. You confess it. This is what I confess. This is what we call to pass. And you see it coming to pass in Jesus' name. I don't know the mountain you are dealing with. Is it the mountain of sickness? Is it the mountain of joblessness? Is it the mountain of one challenge or the other? The Bible says, whoever says to this mountain, is it the mountain of delay? Whatever it is, whatever the mountain it is, I don't care the number of years the mountain has been there. I don't care that it has been there for centuries. I don't care that it has been there for decades. I don't care that it's not used in those It says, whoever, whoever, man, woman, your own, no matter where you find yourself, even if you are on the sick bed, whoever says to this mountain, hey, come on. Are you ready to say something to that mountain this morning? It says, whoever says to that mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. You are not just coming to the mountain to beg. This mountain please. I've been begging you. You know I've been telling you all this while. I spoke to you like that last week. You refuse to do. No. Ah. It says from the day of God the mountain that you are now. The kingdom of God so far what? So far what? And the devil has taken by force. It means if you want to come to the mountain, you are going with confidence, not in your power. And you say mountain, move from here into the sea. In the name of Jesus. And what did he say? And when you say it, no doubt, it's not that you are saying it in 80% of your heart. And 80% is saying, I know it may not work. Let me just say, because they ask us to say, no, quench that spirit of doubt. Quench it for the spirit of faith. So say to yourself, I shall have whatsoever I say. I shall have whatsoever I decree. I shall have whatsoever I command. In Jesus' name. So you can either speak in faith according to God's will or speak in doubt. You can either speak in faith or speak in doubt. You can either speak in faith or speak according to your problem. You can either speak in faith or speak according to your weakness. The devil always brings doubt and fear to us as Christians to cloud our faith and believe in God. That is how the devil tackles it. And that says you have not been given the spirit of faith. 
We have been given the spirit of love, of power, and of sound mind. Don't let the devil take over your heart. Don't let the devil make you feel weak because he keeps bombarding your hands with evil thoughts. You to bombard him with the word of God. Amen. Many of us may say, I don't think I can make it through this challenge. I think this sickness is going to kill me. Can my children live God? Ah, things are just going from bad to worse. I don't think my children can live God in this way. Ah, I doubt if I can have a peaceful marriage. You keep saying negative things. What you see is what you are saying. Come on, stop it. Say what God has said concerning your situation. Amen. So you need to shut up the fear talk when your mind is not going around and around. I don't think that was bad talk. Bad talk. But in Jesus' name, shut it. I shall not die with it. Shut it. If you have to pray, let people say, look at you, there's something wrong with that. It doesn't matter. They might not understand what is going on. You know what they are talking about. When the devil keeps bringing it to you, you are going to lose your job. Something bad is going to happen. Say, shut it in the name of Jesus. I cancel you every wrong thought right now. And I bring you to the obedience of Christ. Don't just keep quiet about it. Speak with faith. Speak with confidence. Amen. So shut all the spirit of doubt and activate the spirit of courage because the Lord has given us unto us. It's very, very important for us to talk in faith, for us to activate the faith talk because it helps us to claim our blessings. When you keep your mouth shut, you can't claim your blessings. The devil knows you have this blessing. This blessing belongs to you. This healing belongs to you. This breakthrough belongs to you. This good marriage belongs to you. But as long as you keep your mouth shut, you cannot get it. You have to activate it. We overcome fear and doubt when we speak in faith. You overcome fear and doubt when we speak in faith. We overcome the devil with the word of our testimony when we speak in faith. We remind the devil of the blessing and victories we have received before when we speak in faith. So don't forget, when we speak in faith, it helps us to what? Claim our blessings. It helps us to overcome fear and doubt. It helps us to overcome the devil with the word of our testimony. It helps us to remind the devil of the blessings we have received before. And you know, it also puts our confidence in God. God has done this before. We'll do it again. Amen.